Hi, welcome to session D5, Storage Processors Accelerate Data Workloads. Um, our company is PlyOps. We're based in Tel Aviv and San Jose, California. Uh, we're about 60 employees uh, with deep uh, knowledge and experience in databases, storage, and semiconductors. And we're currently in evaluation by uh, over 10 tier one cloud server and storage providers with our initial product. So I am Mark Mokrin. I am VP product of the company and uh, Eddie Bortnikov is the VP technology and we'll be presenting this today. So what's, what's the problem that really we're, we're addressing? So in the past few years, we've been reaching a, a new uh, storage compute bottleneck. Uh, just a few years ago, uh, storage was based on hard drives, which were capable of about 100, 200 IOPS and we're, we're giving latencies of about 10 milliseconds. And now people are just used to NVMe SSDs with a half million IOPS and latencies in the tens of microseconds. On the, in, so the, the, the performance of the underlying storage has gone up by many orders of magnitude. On the other hand, uh, CPU performance, while well, it used to be doubling just uh, not too long ago, right now it's flattening out. And at the current rate, CPU performance is doubling about once every 20 years. So, so this phenomenon, the uh, increasing gap, the greatly increasing gap between storage performance and CPU performance uh, is creating a need for, for essentially new storage architectures. Essentially, most storage software today is really based on, 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 on hard drive technologies. And this is just not keeping up with, uh, with flash. Now, so some differences uh, between, between drives, hard drives and flash. Uh, flash for, is expensive while hard drives are of course a lot cheaper. So number one, want to compress the data on flash in order to save cost. Um, however, compression and object management are very expensive in both CPU and DRAM requirements typically. Uh, additional flash does not behave uh, like, uh, like hard drives. Uh, flash is asymmetrical in performance, in read performance and write performance. Generally, the write performance is much lower, and especially the, the random write performance, which generates a tremendous amount of underlying garbage collection inside the SSDs. So in order to gain the max performance, what we really want to do is, number one, to compress the written data in order to write less and to write the data sequentially, which increases the SSD performance since it, since it, tip, since it decreases the uh, amount of garbage collection that needs to be done by the drive. Uh, the problem is exacerbated uh, when we get to denser and denser technologies. Uh, for example, uh, QLC is, uh, experiences much worse random write performance, of course, than TLC. And of course, with PLC, it'll be even much, much worse than that. Uh, if you tack on protections such as RAID 5 or RAID 6, you increase the random write workload due to read modify writes of the RAID, and uh, the performance just becomes abominable, which really means that people are not using RAID 5 and RAID 6 uh, for, uh, for, for, flash, uh, for flash with flash technologies. Now, uh, due to the expense of, uh, of flash, uh, disaggregation is touted as a, as a good solution for that. And it is in many cases. However, it must also be taken into account that the segregation for flash comes with a serious cost. If we compare, for example, uh, disaggregated storage with hard drives, then the network latency is really a very small fraction of the hard drive latency. We're talking network latencies in, uh, in, in a few, in hundred mi microseconds, something like that. That's very small compared to a hard drive. But for flash, uh, this is, a doubling of the flash latency. So disaggregation does have uh, its, uh, uh, its uh, cons as well. As far as data efficiency, so if we look here in gray on the left-hand side, we can see the size of the initial raw data set. When it's stored on, in, on fixed sized block storage, um, such as drives or flash, there is typically uh, quite a bit of data fragmentation. For example, uh, lots of uh, free space inside uh, beach free pages. Um, then additionally, on top of that, uh, we over provision the storage for, for future growth. 
and also for free space uh, for the for the file system and so forth. Then, if we want to uh, to to protect the data with, for example, RAID one, then we double that capacity. So what happens in in most DAS uh, deployments, the actual storage capacity greatly exceeds the data set size. Um, now, disaggregated storage often compresses the data and is also thinly provisioned, but latencies go up, as mentioned earlier. So what are some current approaches to, to Flash to, uh, to optimizing uh, data access on top of Flash? So number one, there are of course, uh, there is software such as RocksDB, which is written with awareness of flash capabilities. So for example, with RocksDB, uh, the technology knows to take advantage of the high parallelism capabilities of flash with many uh, outstanding uh, read requests. Um, however, uh, still with RocksDB, uh, you cannot fully take advantage of the sequential performance of flash since there are multiple software processes going on. So for example, there could be multiple databases uh, running um, in the, uh, on, on the same server. There could be multiple compactions, simultaneous compactions happening in, in RocksDB. So we're not really optimizing for flash performance since we're doing uh, essentially from the FTL perspective, um, random writes. Um, additionally, the data management that is required for software such as RocksDB um, is extremely intensive uh, as far as CPU utilization in order to gain the, the space efficiency. For example, the uh, concurrent compactions. And, and of course, uh, this type of software, it requires application specific integration. So if you want to use a technology such as RocksDB, you need to integrate this into your database or into your application. Uh, another approach is using uh, transitioning to a flash specific interface, such as zone namespaces and uh, an open channel. So these interfaces really are essentially they're trying to take advantage uh, or actually they even mandate uh, using flash uh, optimally, uh, writing to flash uh, sequentially. Uh, however, uh, they require custom integration. You cannot run uh, standard file systems such as XFS and standard applications on top of ZNS or open channel uh, drives. Uh, so essentially there is no good solution today for high performance, cost effective, standard applications, standard file systems on top of Flash. Uh, but that is until now. Uh, with PlyOps, uh, we're, we're coming out with a storage processor which enables high performance, capacity expansion, data protection, enhancing the endurance of uh, flash devices. Um, the, the PlyOps card, uh, essentially it is, uh, it is a key value uh, based technology. We provide uh, KV user space library API, and uh, we also provide a standard block interface uh, which can be used by any application and using any file system. Uh, inside the processor, we do compression. Um, we were doing ZSD decompression, which is fully hardware offloaded. Um, and the, the, the core IP really of the, of the PlyApp storage processor is the, is the KV store, where we do uh, the indexing, the merging of objects, the packing, sorting, garbage collection. Uh, and in addition, we do a RAID 5 or RAID 6 uh, at no performance cost and uh, also uh, encryption with uh, AES-256. As far as the uh, solution overview, so uh, it is KV-based hardware acceleration and extremely low, low uh, cost as far as uh, DRAM per required per object with only two bytes per object, which is about 85% lower than the best competing solution, software solution that we're aware of. And uh, what this really means is that we can index a tremendous amount of, uh, of objects uh, with very low uh, memory footprints. And, uh, and thus we can guarantee uh, single flash access per read 
which leads to very low uh, T latencies. There is hardware offloaded indexing, garbage collection, the compression, the encryption. And the key thing is that we support any SSD. Uh, we support TLC, QLC, Optane, as well as ZNS and Open Channel. Essentially all common flash technologies and SSDs from, from, from any vendor are supported. Um, we do uh, log structured writes. There are no random overwrites. So essentially we do, we perform random application writes at sequential SSD performance. And because we do the log structured writes, we can also do RAID 5, RAID 6 without any read modify writes. Now, um, since we're providing a, a block device driver uh, on top of uh, standard key value, uh, essentially we can support any application and any file system. Um, and we're seeing a lot of benefit with, uh, with relational databases, with NoSQL databases, um, uh, with uh, providing backends to software defined storage devices, and also uh, analytics, uh, analytics applications as well. Um, so we do have the Bach device driver and we also support direction, direct integration of the Key Valley API um, for application specific uh, enhancement, as for example, we did with, uh, with Redis, as we will be discussed later. Um, now, as far as dynamic capacity expans expansion, so we, we, of course, we compress the, the data and then we store the data, uh, we pack it um, essentially with, with no gaps between the objects. So there is no internal fragmentation. And on top of this, when using uh, the block storage API, we also uh, thinly provision the, uh, the volumes as well. So really we enable you to use the full capacity of the SSDs and to oversubscribe uh, on the SSDs in order to, uh, to, uh, to utilize uh, the full capacity. And importantly, uh, this is done at maximum performance. So unlike, if, for example, if most, most people take uh, an SSD and then consciously choose to use just a fraction of that SSD in order to get good performance. Uh, so you don't need to do that with us. You can use the full available capacity at uh, very high and consistent performance. As far as the uh, drive uh, failure protection, so we can support RAID 5, RAID, 5, RAID 6 for multiple drive failures. Um, we have uh, what we call virtual hot capacity. Uh, essentially, there is no uh, standby drive. All the drives are used. And then we just use the uh, free space in the entire group to rebuild on top, on top of that. And essentially, because we are indexing the data and we are aware of the data, then we only need to rebuild the actual data contents. We don't need to rebuild the full capacity of the full capacity of the drive. So this is our cloud optimized architecture. And now. Hi, my name is Edward Bortnikov. I am VP technology for Plyops and today I'll walk you through a number of studies that uh, present the performance advantages prof uh, provided by our Plyx storage uh, processor platform or PSP in short. Let's start with from something really simple, raw block IO. The performance of random writes and uh, especially their scalability uh, with uh, the growing parallelism uh, of, uh, of the load uh, on top uh, uh, of uh, flash drives has long known uh, to be uh, a sore point uh, of the storage systems. So in this case, we studied two systems. The first one is a RAID 5 uh, managed uh, by the uh, PSP. And the uh, second one is a RAID 0 managed uh, by a standard software solution. Both run on top uh, of a system comprised uh, of four two terabyte uh, SSDs. 
we gradually change uh, the load from four to 64 uh, concurrent tasks and uh, look at the, both uh, the bandwidth and the uh, four nines tail latency metrics. As we see, the uh, software rate capability to scale is uh, limited and uh, it uh, only uh, can uh, deliver about one third of uh, the bandwidth delivered by uh, the Plyops uh, RAID 5 uh, device under the maximum uh, load. Likewise, with the, the system's uh, tail latency, we see that uh, the Plyops managed uh, storage system provides uh, a much faster uh, tail latency which uh, of course uh, drives uh, higher system uh, uh, interactivity. All this happens uh, thanks to uh, uh, the Plyops uh, uh, right optimized architecture that uh, as you heard uh, in Mark's presentation, transforms uh, random writes to flash uh, friendly sequential writes. Needless to say, we uh, achieve uh, all this performance uh, on a RAID 5 system that uh, delivers a uh, high availability that is not part uh, of the uh, RAID 0 features. We'll revisit uh, the uh, RAID uh, uh, 5 uh, system configuration in other use cases. Next up is MariaDB a very popular uh, SQL uh, database, which uh, we study under the uh, industry standard uh, TPCC workload that simulates a, uh, uh, an online uh, transaction processing uh, environment. We run uh, MariaDB uh, under a challenging uh, 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 workload. Uh, uh, namely, uh, we uh, run uh, eight instances uh, of, uh, of the database on a 40 core computer, uh, excuse me, 80 core computer uh, over a, a single uh, two terabyte uh, SSD. All in all, uh, 1000 uh, concurrent clients uh, issue queries uh, that uh, hit uh, the systems. What we see here is uh, that uh, the uh, Plyops uh, managed the system delivers uh, an unparalleled throughput and, uh, and tail latency. On the throughput side, we uh, deliver uh, uh, over 230 transactions per second, which is uh, almost 20 times uh, more than uh, uh, in the software driven system and uh, the uh, tail latency follows suit. The, uh, the three nines uh, uh, tail latency is uh, uh, more than the seven times faster than uh, uh, in, the, um, uh, in the baseline. You can also see uh, an illustration uh, of this run uh, uh, over time. As you see, the uh, uh, the latencies uh, provided by uh, the uh, Plyops managed systems uh, are not only low, but uh, also have a very low variance uh, in contrast uh, with those uh, delivered by, uh, uh, by the baseline software, uh, software system. So uh, we don't only uh, manage a very high load, but uh, also can uh, provide a very predictable interactive performance. Let's get back to the, uh, uh, to the RAID system. Uh, in the next experiment, uh, we look uh, at, uh, again, at a system comprised uh, of four two terabyte uh, SSDs, once uh, managed by, uh, by the PSP RAID uh, 5 uh, uh, configuration and, uh, and the other time by uh, the standard Software, uh, software rate zero. Uh, the basic content uh, is about uh, four times uh, compressible. So uh, as you see, our system uh, consumes uh, ultimately 
over three times less disk uh, 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 disk space, which is uh, close to the uh, to the contents compression uh, potential. While it's clear that uh, the RAID 5 uh, implementation consumes part uh, of the sy uh, system cycles, and uh, it's also much harder to saturate uh, the system uh, of, uh, of uh, four flash drives, we still uh, uh, deliver uh, almost uh, twice uh, uh, as many uh, uh, queries per second uh, as uh, uh, the parallel uh, software system. And uh, our tail latency uh, is uh, 2.4x uh, lower. The next uh, uh, experiment uh, zooms into uh, RAID 5 uh, in action. Once again, we run uh, the two systems side uh, by side. The Plyops managed RAID 5 and uh, the software managed the uh, RAID 0. In the first experiment, uh, after a, a, a little bit more than, uh, than an hour of uh, continuous execution, uh, we crash one of the SSDs uh, in a controlled way. What we see is that uh, immediately the recovery uh, process uh, is triggered uh, in the background and uh, the whole system is, uh, is rebuilt in less uh, than two hours. All this happens uh, with uh, less uh, than 10% uh, loss uh, in the overall uh, uh, client perceived uh, uh, throughput, uh, while uh, uh, in the normal operation mode, uh, the, uh, the system uh, delivers 2.5x uh, uh, sustained throughput uh, compared uh, to software uh, rate zero. Ultimately, that means uh, that uh, the client applications uh, can uh, run uninterrupted with uh, only a minor impact on their uh, perceivable performance. All that uh, is not possible in the world uh, of, uh, uh, of software uh, managed uh, uh, RAID systems. It's uh, notable uh, uh, to say that uh, the uh, balance between uh, the rebuild speed and uh, uh, the uh, loss of, uh, uh, of the application uh, throughput is uh, a parameter that, uh, that can be tuned in either direction. In uh, our case, uh, it's uh, tuned uh, to rebuild uh, of one terabyte uh, of data in an hour, but uh, it can uh, also be either increased uh, or reduced in accordance with the customer requirements. We now turn to a different use case. MongoDB uh, is uh, a very popular NoSQL database, a document uh, uh, database that uh, uh, is used uh, by many developers in uh, multiple use cases. In this case too, we uh, uh, use uh, the data set that uh, is uh, Forex compressible and uh, we track the overall uh, system space at the, as well as the, uh, as the throughput and, the, and latency metrics. In the setting, we are uh, uh, interested to study the performance uh, of, uh, of MongoDB uh, on top of uh, two hardware configurations. The first one is uh, a slow QLC flash drive uh, managed by, uh, by PSP. And on the other hand, a fast uh, uh, TLC flash drive managed uh, by vanilla software. First of all, uh, uh, we know that uh, we deliver about uh, 3x um, Capacity savings uh, similar to the uh, to the MariaDB uh, use case, thanks uh, to our built-in compression uh, algorithms. On the performance side, uh, we uh, uh, see that the uh, the, the throughput uh, delivered uh, in two write-intensive uh, uh, workloads. 
Uh, the first uh, containing 100 uh, uh, percent of uh, of uh, reads uh, followed by writes named uh, YCSBF, and the second uh, is a 50-50 mix of uh, of reads uh, and writes uh, named uh, YCSBA. Uh, the, in uh, in both cases, the uh, the, the throughput uh, delivered by the PlyOps uh, managed system is uh, above uh, 250% uh, the, the baseline, despite the fact that uh, uh, we are actually running on top uh, of a slower, much slower uh, flash drive. As we zoom into the uh, tail latencies uh, uh, delivered uh, by, uh, by the two systems, uh, this time, uh, both running on top uh, of our uh, QLC uh, SSD, we also see that uh, there is a uh, decisive uh, uh, gap of uh, over uh, three times uh, uh, faster uh, latency, both for puts and for gets, uh, provided by uh, the PlyOps uh, managed system. So once again, it's uh, not only that the uh, uh, the system is uh, uh, is uh, overall uh, faster in the sense that uh, it can uh, uh, handle a lot more transactions. Uh, it uh, also provides a, a much uh, higher interactivity and predictive speed. All right, one might ask uh, the following question. Uh, many uh, databases, including MongoDB, can use uh, compression software in order to mitigate uh, the speed versus uh, uh, disk space uh, trade-off. Uh, we, uh, well, we decided to study uh, what does it mean in, uh, in terms of uh, performance. Well, we uh, compared the uh, uh, the PSP managed system versus uh, versus the uh, uh, software with uh, internal uh, uh, compression uh, algorithm, namely uh, the ZSTD uh, uh, algorithm uh, applied. While the two systems uh, now produce uh, approximately uh, uh, a system image of uh, uh, the data image of, uh, of similar size, uh, the performance gap uh, is, uh, is once again uh, decisive. As you see, the PlyOps managed system delivers uh, up to 2.7x uh, uh, throughput uh, advantage compared uh, to, the, uh, uh, to MongoDB that applies uh, uh, software-based compression. Let's sum up all, uh, all these examples uh, and see what, uh, what you get by using the PlyOps uh, block device system. Overall, your product become, uh, becomes much faster and cheaper. You get decisive improvements in capacity, throughput, uh, and latency across a range of very diverse workloads. As you see today, uh, we've studied raw block IO, SQL, and, uh, and NoSQL databases and saw the performance gains uh, over, uh, across the board. Your product also becomes uh, more reliable thanks to the built-in driver uh, protection feature uh, in uh, PSP uh, RAID 5, you can uh, enjoy the best of the, uh, the both worlds. The system is both more reliable and faster than uh, the software managed uh, uh, RAID 0. Moreover, uh, the online uh, 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 rebuild process lets uh, uh, your application run uh, uh, uninterrupted with only a minor impact of, uh, of the uh, data reconstruction process that is going on uh, uh, in the background. Last and not least, with, uh, uh, with PSP, you can use uh, slower hardware uh, at, uh, and achieve uh, uh, higher speed. We saw, well, we saw that through the uh, experiment conducted uh, through MongoDB 
running uh, uh, on a uh, on a slower uh, QLC hardware under uh, under PSP. So at the end of the day, uh, my message would be: there is no need uh, uh, to optimize for any specific performance uh, metric uh, when you're using the uh, the Flyox storage uh, processor. You get uh, uh, all of them in one: the capacity throughput uh, and uh, and latency all in one uh, nice package without the need for concessions or trade-offs. Thank you very much.